Uh, it's been a long wait for this one right here. It is the Techlast X6 Pro. I even forgot I had the thing ordered and it just showed up because I just thought it was never actually going to come. But finally they seem to have solved their problems with stock Techlast. I've got the tablet of course, 12.6 inch screen. It has the Core M7Y30, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage with I believe the easy access hatch underneath the kickstand so you can easily upgrade that uh, SSD as well. Got the keyboard here of course is too and I do have this stylus which is around here somewhere so let's check it out. Now we'll take a look at what we get inside the box. So we have here an instruction leaflet here so this is just basically I think a quick start guide. Okay warranty as well is there and just a little QC inspection pass too. Good to see. That means that someone's actually checked it out. It shouldn't have any faults and we should have under this of course the power supply. All right, so it's the same one that we've got with the, for example, Techlast F15 and other tech of theirs, the European charger. So white with the DC in, but it will support also uh, type C charging. So this is rated to 12 volts, two amps there. It's a positive in the middle if you're looking for a replacement one. And this is the keyboard right here. So if you want to know the model of it, it is the tl dash T6 keyboard. I believe it is very similar to the keyboard that I had with the Techlast X4. They're basically the same family of two in one Windows tablets. So that one was quite a good quality keyboard, very good finish to it. I like the paint job they gave it too, which was like a purple color. I think this hopefully will have that same color in it. So we'll have a look. And yeah, it's really basically. The same keyboard, but much larger as you can see. So good size touchpad here. It is plastic, the finish. This has like a rubberized paint job to it. And the keys themselves aren't backlit. So there's no backlighting on this, which was really the only complaint I had. And the smaller touchpad with the Teclas X4's keyboard. This looks good. It is quite strong. And there are magnets in here as well. So I will show you what it's like docked to, of course, the X6 Pro. Good key travel on these as well. Overall, it's a very high quality type cover style keyboard. But just before I do dock it, the keyboard to the tablet, let's just weigh it here because it feels quite heavy. Okay, so 885 grams with the keyboard that brings it up to 1.24 kilos, which isn't too bad, I guess, considering it's 12.6 inches, this tablet. So I will just clip in, as you can see right there. And this is the furthest it goes back, the kickstand. So that is 135 degrees. I will check the second level on the keyboard as well, because that's the most comfortable, of course, due to the angle. Okay, and even with the kickstand right back, you can see it still gives us a nice increase there for typing comfort, pressing down hard. There's a little bit of bounce maybe if you are very heavy handed with your typing. And just to show you the tablet two side on, so it's 8.5 millimeters, the thickness of the tablet. And closed now, as you can see, that is now 15.5 millimeters, the overall thickness. For ports on the right side, we've got DC in for charging with the included power supply. Then we have HDMI out, which is HDMI 1.4A spec. So sadly, this is not HDMI 2, or at least in my testing, I'm not able to get full 4K 60 Hertz out of it. Another USB 3 port, which will power external hard drives and our Type-C port, which is fully spec'd. I've got it plugged into an external power delivery power brick that I have, and it's working fine. It's charging the tablet, so that is good if you wanted to use one of those, or you have a power uh, delivery power supply type C, you're able to use that as well. So you're gonna get data out of this, and also 4K 30 hertz video output. On the top here, we've got our volume and power buttons. Now these feel okay. I think it could be made out of plastic, or just painted plastic to imitate metal here. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support, a full-sized USB 3 port here, and it's marking microphone. So we've got one microphone right here, and then another one just off camera. So either side flanking the rear five megapixel cameras where you'll find the dual array mics. You can see that right here. So this camera on the rear is an autofocus one as well. So you will be able to focus up close on text if you wanted to, a quick snap, but it won't have amazing quality. Oh, and I almost missed showing you this, and that's the micro SD card slot. So this is only gonna be USB 2 spec, 
it's wired up. It's not going to be a fast card reader using PCIe, anything like that. So it looks like the cards will sit in flush, but I wanted to test that. Uh, nope, it doesn't go that way. So other way around here. Let's push that down. So it clicks in nicely, and that's good. So we're not going to hopefully lose them. I doubt it. I don't anything will press up against this because it clicks in quite hard. So there is a bit of bezel on this as to be expected and you can easily get hold of it too without accidentally touching the screen. So this webcam I'm showing you here up front, this one is 2 megapixels. There will be a sample of it in my full review of the X6 Pro. So here we can see the hinge mechanism and it looks quite good, it's all screwed into place. There's no plastics involved and I do believe it's going to be quite reliable. There's a magnetic strip along the top here. Well, the magnet's just here, so that's actually going to keep it closed. So it won't be flopping about, rattling, or being a pain there. There are little gaps either side, so I can easily get my finger in there and to pull that up. And the hinge, kickstand hinge here, does feel quite stiff. Now, what I wanted to point out is this. So we do have, just like the Teclas X4, an easy access SSD hatch. Now, this is something that not even the Surface Pro has that I wish it had. So I've just opened it up and we have a 2280 sized SSD. So if you're going to upgrade this, you want to put a terabyte in or two terabytes, just make sure it is SATA 3 spec, okay? Because M.2 PCIe's will not work in here. It's only SATA 3. So first boot here, I wanted to go into the BIOS just to check if it was fully unlocked. And the good news is, yes, as you can see, we have all the options you can imagine for this. Now it does display Thunderbolt configuration there. These are just settings that are in here, okay? It doesn't actually support Thunderbolt here, and nor does it support NVMe, even though you can see that. I know some people in the comments will say, hey, NVE, it does support it, but the actual slot will not take it because it's slightly different. You won't even be able to fit it in there. So we've got access then, of course, to our power and performance. So you can change some things here with the CPU. We could increase the power limit, which looks to be all set here by default, okay, because they've not really made any adjustments here. Our boot performance is even set to the non-turbo performance. I could, in fact, change that to uh, turbo performance just to help it boot up a little bit quicker. And if you wanted to go in and change some of these settings here, then feel free to do so at your own risk, okay, because some of these settings can get you into a lot of trouble, and it could even end up with the tablet not booting, so I don't recommend messing about with this. If you want to increase power limits, I highly recommend doing the software method first before going and then setting it in the BIOS, so you can undervolt, increase your power limit using Intel's XTU, which is their extreme tuning utility. And here is our 3x2 display. So initial impressions, this is a very nice looking display. Now there's a bit of shimmering going on. It's only on video. I don't really know what's happening. It's sometimes the pulse width modulation that they're using to control the brightness will affect and just show up on camera. But in person, I'm not seeing it at all. The touch accuracy, just wanted to quickly demonstrate that does seem really good. And this screen is fully laminated. So that means no ugly, horrible gap between the touch digitizer glass on the front and then the IPS panel below. So I have it with uh, the default skating in Windows. The text is probably going to look a little bit small here, but it does look very sharp, this screen. So far, it's a really nice panel. This is what really makes this particular two-in-one tablet here because it does have a pixel density of 274 ppi. So the power limits of the Core M3, the KB Lake, the 7Y30, 7 watts for the power limit level limit one sorry and then power limit level two is 15 watts which is fine it's not really going to hold it up too much but i have noticed that they have the ram configured the eight gigabytes it's just single channel configuration so not dual so we are missing out on a little bit of uh memory bandwidth there which will affect the performance somewhat and the ram speed as well is 1600 megahertz the highest the core m37y 30 supports is 1866 megahertz so we don't have that here so the internal storage that tech last branded one here 256 gigabytes decent kind of speeds this is what you kind of expect really for a sata 3 M.2 drive, perhaps the right's a little bit lower because it's Techlast's own brand here. Now free space, I'll just point that out as well, you get 218 gigabytes. Windows has a legitimate key here. It was actually already set up, so it just went straight into the desktop here with that background, as you can see, that Techlast seems to like. So the touch accuracy, I want to just give you a little bit of feedback on that, is also very, very good. No problems with that whatsoever. So if I just now bring up our device manager and show you that we have Intel's dual band wireless AC, the 3165 
Very common chipset here. It's okay, at least we've got the dual band. The speeds top out around 380, 90 megabits per second with that one. So it's not the fastest wireless LAN out there. And there's that drive listed there. My SD card's in there as well. And of course, it's a dual core CPU, this one, fanless. And it does have two threads more. So it's four threads and the two cores with this one. We do also have an accelerometer on board for the screen rotation, which is working just fine. And our Geekbench 4 score here. So the single core score is kind of what I expect. Multi-core score a little bit slower, probably because of the single channel memory configuration here. But overall, it's not too bad for the Core M37Y30. And to give you some feedback on the touchpad, so yes, it is using Windows Precision Drivers. Pretty much everything does now. And it feels okay. It's not the best touchpad I have used. The surface is all right. The accuracy is fine. It's quite usable moving it around. I'm really not having too much of a problem with it. And of course, all your Windows 10 gestures are supported there. So that's great. Now, what about these speakers? So they are stereo ones and they're front facing, which is good, but uh, they sound quite bad. They're poor. They're not very loud. So almost exactly the same hardware. Probably is the same hardware as the Teclas X4. But here's a sample of these rather weak speakers. Okay, so what about the stylus? Now I got what I think was the stylus for it, according to Gearbest, and it's not working at all. Now I've replaced the battery. In fact, it doesn't even come with the battery. So I've went and bought some more batteries because I've got lots of them lying around. It's quad A battery and nothing, absolutely nothing. So this must not be the stylus or my stylus is faulty, which is a real shame because it's meant to support a 4096 pressure level active stylus, I think. And it's got the two buttons on it here as well. So why it's not working, I don't know. Linux support not looking very good because the touch screen, nothing, okay? And the touchpad as well, absolutely nothing. So you're gonna have to hunt around and try and find drivers and get that working, which is a little bit of a hassle. So there we go, it is looking very promising. I think this is the best Surface Pro alternative out there for the price if people are looking for that. If you don't want a fan as well, and you don't want to spend a lot, then really, this is about it that I can see. So unfortunately, my stylus doesn't seem to be the correct stylus for it. I mean, I checked the battery, I bought a new battery, it's fine. It's just nothing's working with the stylus with this, uh, the one that I got. So it must be incorrect there. That's the only conclusion that I can draw from it. So the kickstand's working well. It's quite a stiff hinge. Uh, pressing against it, it's not going to fall back. You can see that's the maximum angle right there. 8 gigabytes of RAM, but it's only single channel, unfortunately. Both the USB 3 ports are working. The Type-C port is working fine. It has a proper, legit Windows 10 license. Now, why the stock problems and the delays in me getting this as well was the supply issue with the chipset. So the Core M3, the, the 7Y30, uh, apparently it's very hard to get hold of, short supply, and this is why there could actually be limited stock on this one as well. So I don't know whether it's gonna be out of stock again later on. So we'll have to see what happens with that. So the keyboard quality typing on it, good feel to it. Touchpad, good feel as well. And as mentioned, the build is really good. The main thing that sets it apart is a very nice fully laminated screen. It's 400 lux bright, so it's got a very decent brightness to it. Not the brightest out there, very good touch accuracy. It's very responsive to touch as well. And it's good that I can see. Now I probably, I will break out my Spider 5 Pro too. I'll measure uh, the color space that it has. So that'll be the Adobe RGB, sRGB. That's all gonna be in the full review along with thermals, gaming, general performance, so checking out documents, Excel, spreadsheets, things like that, uh, 4K streaming will all be tested. That will all be in the full review with a webcam sample. But I can tell you now the weaknesses, battery life, five or six hours, webcam, doesn't look wonderful. Speakers, not really loud enough. And that is really about all I can find so far. So it is looking very promising here. So I hope to see you back with that full review. Thank you so much for watching this unboxing and first look at the Techlast X6 Pro.